Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Velvet Lounge. Yes, we've been on hiatus for a little while because we had a family tragedy to deal with. Um, we are getting through it. We are okay. Um, unfortunately, it's part of life. Sometimes it's just way too soon and the results that we expect are not always what we get, but I do believe there is a reason and a purpose for everything. Um, I just wish that the results were different this time, especially, but thank you to everyone that sent their well wishes to us. We really appreciated it. We needed it. Um, this was a hard loss for us. Um, and you know, the person will live in our memories forever. And I am actually going to dedicate this particular video to Melissa Jean Garrett, because one of the things that we had in common was the fact that we loved knickknacks and such, and we love to resell. So this is dedicated to Melissa. So right now, um, I'm just going to give you a little bit of, you know, a little more news about things that have been going on. One of them is we are trying something different. What we are trying is because I come across, and Al and I come across so many items, hundreds of thousands of them in our travels and as we work on certain projects, that we decided that we did not want to continue just throwing these things into a dumpster or getting them recycled, if you will, um, because there's a lot of scrapping that goes on. We decided that what we want to try is to allow for other resellers to buy this stuff in bulk. So clothing, for example, as you know, I sell very little to no clothing. And when we do come across clothing, our workers, volunteers, simply toss it in a dumpster. If time permits, which is not often, we will donate to Big Brothers, Big Sisters. We will make a huge pile and just let them come and take the stuff away. Um, unfortunately, I would say if we work on 20 projects, that probably only happens for one simply because time is of the essence. We need to get in, we need to get out, we need to move on. But one of the things that we're doing is collecting some of this stuff. We're not being overly picky or choosy. Um, and we're putting it into storage units and allowing resellers to come by those units and buy in bulk. So they're buying things before they ever hit a thrift shop or Obviously, they're saving them from a landfill as well, or either from being scrapped. So it's everything from clothing to artwork to pottery to costume jewelry, books, ephemera, um, dishes. Uh, the I don't know if I said tools, but the list goes on and on and on. Electronics, whatever. Um, there will just simply be a mixture of different items available at different times. So there's a lot of variety going on. And, you know, we are not cleaning items. We are not trying to make anything look like a store. It is what it is, where it is. Um, item, you know, you would need to bring your own boxes, bins, whatever it is you're using to cart this stuff away. Everything is cash and carry. And if you are an excellent customer, then we will definitely be calling you so that you get the best pick of the items as early as possible. So if you're interested in that, my contact information is down below in this video description, as well as on our about page for this YouTube channel. Um, my email address is there. You can also hit me up via Facebook Messenger. So please do not post anything on my Facebook page. I probably will never see it, or by the time I do, it'll be too late. But I do um, have Facebook Messenger turned on so I can get your message right away, and I'll also get a, an alert. So anyway, and I do check my email every day, several times a day, just to let you know. 
And also what might be helpful for you is if you are in the eastern part of the United States, meaning the upper part, New England, um, and you can drive, you know, across a state border, then you will probably make out really well. Um, we are not trying to sell at thrift store prices. We are simply trying to move this stuff, but we do need to make a profit off of it and see if it's lucrative enough to continue. So if you have any suggestions as to how we can do this differently or better, let me know. Uh, we're always open to suggestions. And as we go through experimenting with this, obviously we might tweak a few things. I have my first meetings um, with potential buyers tomorrow. I will definitely see if it's okay to do a video and follow up with you guys and let you know how that went. So this video, getting back to why we're really here, is to show you and share with you some of the items that, you know, we do recover that would have been thrown into the dumpster and into a landfill. Um, and I'm not going to go through an exhaustive list, but I am going to show you several examples and tell you, and you can see what we paid for them. And just as a disclaimer, we always make a little bit on the handling so where you see the shipping cost, we, you know, can make anywhere from several dollars off of the handling to cents. So to like maybe 50, 75 cents for handling. So um, without further ado, here we go. So this is an antique apothecary pharmacy medical poison cocaine cup mug. So that's how I described it in the, obviously the title. But the cool thing about this is these are becoming incredibly rare. One of the ways to tell if you have an authentic one is, you know, think about where you first of all sourced it. Um, as in the lady that we actually sourced this from was a nurse um, in Connecticut for many, many decades. And she had this and you can also tell it's an original by looking at the handle. The handle should be relatively thin, not super thin about, you know, it should be thinner than this um, pen is. And also usually on the fakes, they don't have the black lip around the mug and also look at the bottom of it and always, you know, be familiar with what the artwork should look like. Sometimes the um, repos, they try to become too aggressive with the artwork. If you recall, or if you think about it, these were used in apothecaries when, yes, it was illegal and totally suggested by all the doctors out there that you have your little toke of cocaine to deal with any pain. It was used in teething for babies to people who had arthritis that were like 80, 90 years old and everyone in between. So this is obviously, um, these were used during an era before people started to abuse the drug. Um, and the apothecary fellow, he would actually mix it up and send you away, or sometimes you would actually consume it right there or in a doctor's office. But anyway, this sold for $39.99 plus $7.95 shipping and handling. Next, I have a awesome find. This is something I loved when I saw it. I couldn't wait to like list it for sale. And it is a vintage pen and pencil set. The cool thing about this is that the original box was still present. And the red velvet lining inside, which is kind of like molded to fit these, was still there as well. Also, both caps or tops were still there. Usually one is missing or both are missing. And these are what they call telescoping and they're mechanical, they're propelling because it's sort of like, you know, you open and you close them like this and they close down to being about an inch and a half to two inches long. So yes, what you see opened up in the box here and here, this one I believe was about five inches. This was like four inches something, but you can collapse it all down put the caps on it each cap has a finding on the top of it so that you can add it to a chalotain 
and you would be able, or even to a necklace, you know, some people would wear these around their necks, you know, imagine you're an accountant in an office. These actually did have utilitarian usages. So it wasn't just, you know, a decorative item like a piece of jewelry and they actually worked. Um, so that sold for $21 and 50 cents. There were seven bidders on that. You know how I love my Heidi Dawes jewelry for resale when I can find it, but what I really loved, honestly, was this turtle. However, I am sort of a minimalist, so I do believe there's a limit to everything. And I love turtles, but you do have to draw the line somewhere. And I drew the line on this and decided not to keep it. I thought about it, but decided not to keep it. And I listed it for sale for um, $44.99. And of course it's sold. And the underbelly of this not only has um, the finding for the brooch, there's also a built-in finding so that you can hang this from a necklace. And it's a pretty large um, sea turtle, tons of rhinestones. The colors are magnificent. Like the, that picture does not do it justice. So here we have a one of my favorite um, vintage jewelry designers is Trafari. I love their vintage stuff because there was so much detail and style put into it. It was so tastefully done. Um, and it also wasn't something that was minimal, but it also wasn't gigantic and overly done. So this is a bracelet and necklace but the cool thing about this is the extender is right here this piece actually comes off and you can actually have the necklace be smaller so if you did not like if the necklace was going to hang too low you could adjust it usually that extender is missing because most people did not require the extender so it was really special to find it with that and normally without it, it would not have sold for $62.99. It probably would have sold for more about, I would say like $39. Um, and also the cool thing is a bracelet was present as well. So that added extra value as well as the fact that the original store receipt for $14.82 and the box that it came in from the department store which has been out of business for like over 30 years um, was also there as well so all of that together made a great package added a lot of value to this lot and you know I did um, you know let it go easily and one of the things with rhinestones before you sell anything like that is you want to check to make sure all of the rhinestones are present and that they're securely fitted. If they're not, then what you need to buy is a jewelry glue, which you can get from a jewelry store, not the stuff that you would buy from a craft store, although some craft stores do have really good jewelry glue. I would test them first before I put it on the actual piece. And then you could re-secure those. There's a little more to it than that. And I might in the future do a video on jewelry repair. Because if there's foil on the um, rhinestone, for example, or in the setting itself, you don't want to destroy that because you'll lose a luster. So there is more to it than simply adding some glue. But simply make sure that every rhinestone is present. If it isn't, describe it. Because people who collect that stuff... They are fanatical when it comes to detail, and I don't blame them. So the other thing we came into is in a bunch, like I don't know how many hundreds and hundreds of dollars there were of uncirculated and circulated bills, United States currency. Um, part of that stash was $2 bills. There were some bicentennial $2 bills, which are special. They are not like a standard $2 bill. What makes them special is, number one, if you can find them uncirculated, which this one was. Number two is on the back of the bill, there is a stamp as well as 
it, the stamp is canceled using this large cancellation stamp. So you have a United States postage stamp, which should hang off the edge just a little bit. And then you have this cancellation of the stamp. And this is to commemorate um, 1776. These bills were issued in 1976. And they all, not all of them have this stamp on them. All of them have, of course, the 1976 date for $2 bills. It's the only time they were ever issued, as far as I know, anyway. And when you receive one that's a bicentennial, it's extra special, especially if it's not circulated. So this was never circulated. It has a cancellation. It has the United States postage stamp, which should always be the 13 cent stamp. And this is the stamp that they used. And it sold for $6.99, plus, of course, the shipping and handling. Oops, I skipped over the next one. Um, part of that stash that we also found was a $5 bill. This one sold for $17.50. So that's pretty cool to have like a $5 bill and make a profit of $12.50 off of it, plus like, I don't know, 25, 30 cents off in the handling part of it. And what made this special is it was issued in 1974, and we have several, several of them, and it was uncirculated. So very cool bill. You know, I might do a video, once again, I keep saying I might do all of these videos in the future on collecting paper money, what to look for because there are several characteristics that give paper money value besides its actual face value. In your wallet right now, you might have money that is worth more than the face value. Do some research yourself or tune in for a future video, but definitely always check your change um, when you receive money back from the bank. Check that um, because you may be spending money that can actually make you more money than any savings account or stock or bond out there today. So that was a really great find. And like I said, we do have quite a bit of paper money that we need to list. And some of it was like, so like the, the condition was so far gone that we actually just took like that money to the bank and we cashed it in. So just to let you know, just because paper money is old, like let's say you find something that's like 1920s, if the condition really sucks, it's only worth the face value. Maybe a few, you know, maybe 20 cents, 25 cents more than that, but no more. So this is one that my husband and I, which was really funny, as we were working on this project um, and sorting stuff so the guys knew what was you know, to go in a dumpster and what was we were taking away. Uh, one of the things that happened, which is super hilarious, is my husband came across this little um, lithograph. It's actually a bank, but it's also a shoe shine kit. So um, I was like, no, those don't sell because I, I've seen these before. And so he was like, no, but look at it. It's so cute. And it has little brushes in it. And it actually still had the plastic red strap. Usually the brushes are missing. The strap is missing. Usually the um, artwork is not that good. It's usually like, you know, scratched or chipped because the kids actually played with them. Many times these were played with outside in a sand pit. So, you know, rust is present, etc. But this was in really pretty special condition. And also having these additional pieces, I decided, okay, you want me to list it? I'll do it. Let's see what happened. I did it. It sold for $24.99. And I only had to send it like one county over from where we lived. Awesome find. And also with it being a double collectible as a shoe shine kit as well as a bank. I think that's one of the reasons that it's sold besides a condition. So one of the things that people commonly overlook are natural specimens. So this um, seashell is about the size, it's bigger than my fist, probably the size of my husband's fist. Um, so it's, 
or I would say, you know, maybe a really large grapefruit. And I saw it. I loved it. The, it's tactile, just touching it. It was so smooth from being thrown around in the ocean and on the shore and the sand for decades, I assume. Also, um, there was no living specimen inside. That specimen was long gone. There were no remains or anything. The only thing stuck inside were other seashells, which was really pretty cool as well. And we were able to sell this for $24.99. So although this is not one of those large conch, is it conch shells that you would find in the Caribbean, this was actually found here in New England, which made it more special because the ones that are found in the Caribbean are pretty common. So that was a really cool $25 find pretty much. So costume jewelry, you know I love it. I'm not even really much of a jewelry wearer. I commonly have to remind myself to put on my wedding rings um, when we go out in the world, but this is such a cool piece. If I was a necklace wearer, I would definitely have kept this. It is signed, hallmarked on the back, Vendome. Um, it is definitely a statement piece. It's in that Roman, Egyptian, Greek revival sort of period. Um, and also, you can't really tell, but these are like, I believe, Mother of Pearl. It's inset with. And they're sort of like a grayish white, which was really cool. Because at first when I saw it, I actually thought it was like the white metal. Um, which is what this necklace is made out of mostly. And the ori I guess this is the original chain. Um, it's what was with it. It's definitely not the quality of a chain you would get today. And it's pretty large. Um, and the person who got it, they not only left me, of course, positive feedback, but they also like sent me an extra note. They were just so thrilled with it. Um, I sold it for $34.99, and I can tell you that if someone else found this, they probably would not have really known what it was um, or how special it was. They would have probably have known it was something and probably would have listed for like $20, but this is definitely, you know, it's probably worth maybe about $40-ish, but I always try to leave meat on the bone for people who might be selling things in the future. So the last item I'm going to talk about today is this Alvin Raphael Demitasse Sterling Silver Spoon. It's of the Art Nouveau period. It has this lady who is um, dancing. She has an arm up. She has an arm over her bosom. And she's just enjoying her life on this spoon. Um, this is a very hard to find spoon. It is um, 1902 is when it was made. Um, it has a hallmarks on it, perfectly hallmarked. It weighs 37 grams, and we sold it, so that's 37 grams of sterling silver, and we sold it for $69.99. Um, the shipping on it, yes, it says $9.95, but the shipping, in, I, actually I believe the shipping was like $2 and some change, but then I added insurance to it. And the insurance was about $2 and some change as well. So that is what I have for today. Please just take a moment to give us a thumbs up. We really appreciate you guys looking at our videos. Also, my next video is going to be um, describing some more items that we find that could easily end up in your resale pocket. Um, and yes, we are, we're not holding back. We're trying to resell, you know, just have resellers buy a bunch of everything. So you can see the quality of these items. They're not just junky little rusty things or things that you have to dig out of, you know, someone's, um, bunch of stuff at a flea market or, you know, spend hours and hours in a thrift shop and still walk out with nothing that's really of significant value. So if you are interested, please, once again, 
down in the description of this video as well as the about tab has my contact information. I will tell you if you are, let's say, in North Carolina, it probably will not work because you will need to be able to get to where we are and that's really far from where we are and also most of our turnaround happens within one or two days. So thank you for tuning in. Give us a thumbs up and also hit that subscribe button. And remember, go out there and make a bargain turn into something that is going to impact your banking account in a positive way. Have fun. Live life.